The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Keith Brown. Uh, thank you, President. Following on from the written update provided to members at the end of last week on the circumstances surrounding the future of burnt island fabrications, or BIFAB as it is known, I wanted to take this opportunity to brief the Chamber on the outcome of discussions that continued last week and came to a conclusion at the weekend and on the commitment this Government has made to support BIFAB in the future. Firstly, a little background on the company. BIFAB is a major fabrication supplier to the oil and gas sector, offshore renewables and wider infrastructure industries. It operates across three sites uh, across Scotland, Burnt Island and Methylon Fife and Arnish on the Isle of Lewis in the Outer Hebrides. It has a permanent workforce of around 250 staff with a further 1,100 staff employed via agencies to support specific contracts. On Thursday the 9th of November, ministers and officials were informed that BIFAB was in some financial difficulty. The company contacted my colleague, the Minister for Business, Innovation and Energy, uh, to inform him that they were about to file a notice of intention to appoint administrators the following day to protect the company. That, not that notice created a 10-day period during which BIFAB could seek a solution to their financial difficulties. From that initial contact, uh, the Minister for Business, Innovation and Energy and I engaged in extensive discussions with the company, with the trade unions involved, with commercial stakeholders and their advisers, and with the UK Government over the course of the last week. Through these discussions, we were able to provide enough comfort to the BIFAB board to delay a decision to place the company into administration immediately and to secure the space for negotiations to continue and a positive solution to be found. These discussions with SSE, the partners in the Beatrice Project, Siemens, Seaway Heavy Lifting, BIFAB themselves and trade unions, Unite and GMB predominantly, also provided us with a clearer picture of the nature of the financial position that BIFAB was in and the dispute that lay behind their financial difficulties. Throughout this time, the First Minister was kept fully up to date on all aspects of the situation, raising the matter with the Prime Minister and engaging directly with SSE and CUA Heavy Lifting while she was in Bonn for a major international climate change event. This engagement continued on Thursday and culminated in two long days of discussions on Friday and Saturday last week, led by the First Minister with all the key companies which I've mentioned previously. These discussions helped to broker a commercial agreement with the parties involved that would relieve the financial pressure on BIFAB and ensure the continuation of the contract for the construction of the jackets for the Beatrice offshore wind farm project. Throughout this period, I also met with uh, GMB and Unite and ensured the unions were informed of the progress of discussions uh, with the First Minister and BIFAB meeting with the unions on Saturday shortly before the agreement was signed. Uh, this morning, the First Minister and Paul Wheelhouse visited BIFAB's methyl site to meet the workforce and see some of the work being undertaken. The First Minister continues to be impressed by the commitment of the workforce and expressed to them her determination to identify ways to secure the long-term future of BIFAB. I'm pleased to say that I will also visit BIFAB's Arnish site next week to meet with management and the workforce and see the great work that's being carried out there. The agreement reached on the 18th of November lifted the threat of administration and stated that BIFAB would receive payments to alleviate their immediate cash flow issues at the beginning of this week. And I'm pleased to be able to report that those payments have indeed been made. The agreement also ensures that the contract for the Beatrice project is now fully funded. As an added security, the Scottish Government has committed to make available, if necessary, on a commercial basis, a loan to BIFAB. That loan in part reflects our belief that there is a long-term viable future for BIFAB and we will work with the company to support its future prospects. Employees are back at work and being paid and money has been made available to BIFAB this week, allowing them to get on and fulfil the contract. And work has not stopped there. Additional support to the company is being set up, including from the Scottish Manufacturing Advice Service, SMAS, and the Scottish Government will also have ongoing engagement with the BIFAB management. And I would pledge today, Presiding Officer, that we will continue to work with BIFAB, the trade unions and the commercial partners to identify ways to secure the long-term future of renewables manufacturing on these sites. Like the First Minister, President Officer, I want to take the opportunity to pay tribute to the workforce on all three sites, Burnt Island, Methyl and Arnish. 
Our focus was and remains on the workers, their families and the surrounding communities. And we recognise that this must have been a very anxious time for the workers, uh, their families and the communities. However, since news broke that the company could possibly go into administration, the workforce, in my view, has handled the situation with great poise and great tenacity. This was not lost on the commercial partners. The workers agreed at the beginning of last week to continue working on the current order, even though they might not have been paid. I met with worker representatives on Thursday during the rally outside the Scottish Parliament. I assured them then of the laser-like focus that the Scottish Government would have on retaining the jobs. They themselves were determined to see a resolution and determined to see themselves as part of the solution. And I'd like to pay tribute to their perseverance. Only two months ago, the First Minister set out a programme for government, which pled our, pledged our continued commitment to maintain Scotland's world-leading position as a place for low carbon and renewable energy development and deployment. This sector has already positioned itself as a key part of the Scottish economy. In 2015, the low carbon and renewable energy economy supported 58,500 jobs in Scotland. That accounts for around 14% of the total UK employment in this sector, much higher, of course, than our population share. It has also generated £10.5 billion in turnover, again, 14% of the total UK turnover in this sector, again, higher than our population share would suggest. We have counted 20,000 companies in Scotland active in the sector and we've seen nearly £1 billion in capital investment in renewable power. It's generated nearly £225 million in exports. So we want to continue to build on this and maximise the benefits for Scotland. There are also some real opportunities for the Scottish supply chain, including Bifab, from a number of consented wind projects, for example, NNG and Murray East. We also remain committed to pressing the UK government in developing their industrial strategy to enable the Scottish supply chain to take advantage of growth within the sector. Scotland has the competitive advantage and the building blocks that are critical to more expansion in the renewable sector via the skills of the Scottish workforce, as well as our existing port infrastructure and location and our innovative academic community. We have and will continue to demonstrate our commitment and support for projects that show an innovative and world-leading approach to low-carbon energy and local energy solutions, such as those supported by the Low Carbon Infrastructure Transition Programme. And the Programme for Government announced a further £60 million to be made available for accelerating innovative low-carbon project delivery by 2020, supported by EU funding. And that builds on the Low Carbon Infrastructure Transition Programme, which has already allocated around £50 million to 15 low-carbon capital projects. This funding represents one of the most significant direct energy investments in the last 10 years. To conclude, Presiding Officer, this has been obviously a highly stressful and troubling time for the company and the workforce. And I would like again to pay credit on behalf of the Scottish Government to both the workforce and the company and to all commercial partners. And if you had any doubt about what this uh, resolution meant to them, uh, the demeanour of both those from the company and from those from the trade unions on Saturday night uh, would have confirmed the emotional uh, turmoil that they had gone through and the relief which was evident. Uh, at the very least, the solution sees the contract of the Beatrice offshore wind, from, uh, uh, wind farm project uh, through to completion and we'll continue to pursue a longer term solution that benefits both the firm and the workforce. Thank you. Thank you. Dean Lockhart. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of his statement. It is very welcome news that agreement has been reached between Bifab and the other parties involved in the Beatrix project. This will come as a huge relief to Bifab's 400 F 1,400 employees and communities across Fife and Lewis. As the Cabinet Secretary highlighted, this outcome would not have been possible without the hard work, commitment and dedication of the workers at Bifab. Let me also recognise the important role played by the Cabinet Secretary and the Minister in this outcome. In his statement, the Cabinet Secretary referred to a commercial loan that the Scottish Government has committed to make available to Bifab if necessary. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm the amount of this loan if it is necessary? In addition, what commitments have the Scottish Government or Scottish Enterprise made to Bifab in the event that it may face administration or other financial difficulties after the completion of the current Beatrice contract? And finally, what assistance will the Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise provide to Bifab going forward to ensure that it can compete effectively for future contracts to secure its long-term future? Cabinet Secretary. 
Hey, can I thank uh, Dean Lockhart for his comments and say in relation first of all to the loan package which he has asked about, the uh, total uh, sum that might be involved in that would be around £15 million. Pounds. But as I said in my statement, that would be on commercial terms and it would be drawn down as necessary. It was quite clear, I think, during the discussions that that was necessary, that offer was necessary to unlock from the various partners involved the security that the contract could be seen through to successful conclusion. That's the purpose uh, of uh, the suggested loan. And of course, we will keep Parliament informed as to the progress on that uh, as things move forward. In relation to additional support, there were a number of offers of support, and not just actually from the Scottish Government, in terms of providing further support to the management who had been through a fairly traumatic period to provide additional capacity through Scottish Enterprise and anybody else that we think may be able to help in that regard. I've mentioned already the Scottish Manufacturing Advice Service, plus other offers of support made to the company in terms of trying to seek further capital investment uh, and further um, additional, uh, if you like, advantages for the company as they uh, scour uh, the prospects of new contracts. So a substantial level of support provided to the company, not just by ourselves, also by some of the parties to the agreement which we were able to reach in the end. So I, I was asked when I met with the, not just the full-time trade union officials, but also with the shop stewards, if I believed that buy, buy fab was viable, and that was before we struck this agreement. I said that I did believe it was viable and it could have a very strong future. I continue to believe that, and that belief is bolstered by the agreement we were able to reach at the weekend. And we will continue to work the commitment we gave directly to buy fab on Saturday. Uh, Paul Wheelhouse and myself, is that we are not walking away thinking this is job done by any means. We'll continue to engage with the company and support them right through the completion of this contract into what we hope is a bright future. Jackie Bailey. Retrieve for advance sight of his statement. Scottish Labour applauds the dignity and determination of the BIFAB workforce and we welcome the intervention of the Scottish Government in securing the immediate future of 1,400 skilled workers across Fife and Lewis. But it is to the future that I want to turn. And let me ask the Cabinet Secretary three questions. Firstly, does he agree that last week's uncertainty puts the spotlight on the challenges facing Scottish businesses and manufacturers in securing work from the renewable sector? Secondly, does he also agree that it raises questions about the extent of redistribution from renewables manufacturing into the Scottish economy? Because after all, we are talking about only 4% of a 2.6 billion Beatrice Wind Farm project going to Scottish manufacturing. And finally, the Cabinet Secretary talks about the UK industrial strategy. Does he not also agree that now is the time for the Scottish Government to work with Scottish Labour and develop an industrial strategy for Scotland that grows and sustains decent jobs and decent pay? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, can I say in, in relation to the um, three uh, questions which Jackie Bailey has raised, first of all, I think she mentioned the challenges which companies have in accessing uh, contracts. I think there's no question there are challenges. It was very evident from the discussions that we had that we were talking not just to partners in a consortium to deliver this contract, but people who were otherwise in competition with each other on a regular basis. And that is very tough competition. I have no um, reluctance in saying that. And of course, that is the environment in which both BIFAB and others work. So there are challenges. Uh, what we have done over a number of years is try and make sure that we have the opportunities being provided, not least through the Beatrice uh, project itself, but through other forthcoming projects, some of which I mentioned uh, in my statement, to provide the opportunities. What we can't do is put, our place, uh, put ourselves in the place of private companies. So they may have challenges and we can't help with them. They have to tell us about them uh, at an early enough stage that we can uh, help to deal with those. But I think as well as the fact that we were very uh, concentrated on the jobs, that was the thing that the trade unions in particular emphasised to us. We were also very cognisant of the fact how central this was to the renewable sector in Scotland and to maintain that supply chain link there. So I've mentioned a number of things that we, we have done. I've, I've acknowledged the fact that there are challenges. And I'd also acknowledge the fact that there are opportunities. And I think particularly on the export side, and perhaps not to the most obvious export markets as some people would think. So uh, there are challenges there, um, and we are trying to help companies overcome those. And I mentioned where we have vastly exceeded the contribution that you'd expect from a country of our size within the UK, around 14%. Uh, in relation to the um, industrial strategy, which I think was uh, one of the other points raised by Jackie Bailey, I have said previously, I 
I agree with uh, Scottish Labour when they say when the industrial strategy first came out that it was virtually no mention of trade unions or workforce inside that strategy. I've made that point to the UK government. We don't control the industrial strategy, both as part of the uh, BIFAB discussions and also in relation to the industrial strategy. I spoke with uh, Greg Clark, the Minister Secretary of State responsible for that. Again, I put the points which are of most importance to us, not least through the Scottish Manufacturing Advice Service. So we, of course, will continue to input to the industrial strategy. If Scottish Labour have got suggestions to make over and above that, beyond beyond the rhetoric we sometimes hear, then I'm more than willing to listen to that. I've said that from the start. So I'm more than happy to engage in relation to that. We should get some more detail on that uh, over the course of the next few days, uh, days when I understand the UK government will be making an announce announcement on that. So I'm more than happy to engage with Scottish Labour on that to see how we can best progress things. Thank you. David Torrance to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to put on record the commitment and dedication shown by above for, by for workforce and trade unions over this difficult period to help secure the future of the company. It was also great to see appreciation from the workforce for the role of First Minister and the Scottish Government played in securing the future of BIFAB at the MEFO site this morning. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline the Scottish Government can do to help secure a long-term future of BIFAB as skilled workforce as a major player in the renewable sector in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I also though, acknowledge the assistance we received from David Torrance and the support of other members, Claire Baker, uh, Jenny Goldruth, uh, Alistair Allen, uh, Dean Lockhart and others, all of whom represent areas uh, impacted, directly impacted by this. Uh, in direct response to David Torrance's question, I'd say that we, along with Scottish Enterprise, as I've said, are continuing discussions with the company and looking to see how we can help to ensure BIFAB is seen as an attractive location for additional capital investment. I think that's crucial to the company's future if it's to win those further contracts we want to see them win. And as part of the package announced at the weekend, we will ensure that further support is given both by Scottish Enterprise and also through the Scottish Manufacturing Advice Service. There is more happening in relation to this, which I'm not able to uh, because of commercially confidential reasons to advise the Chamber of, but as we get more information, more hard and fast information, of course, I'm happy to keep members like David Torrance updated with the progress of those discussions. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you. Can I welcome the intervention the Scottish Government has made to save jobs at BIFAB, responding to the dignity and the unity of the workers. But everyone in the industry knows that a key way to secure and grow jobs in the offshore renewable supply chain is through cost reduction as part of an industrial strategy. The Cabinet Secretary mentions a low-carbon infrastructure transition programme in his statement, but that's a fund which isn't even open for the offshore renewable sector to bid into. So what funds and support are specifically available for cost reduction in the supply chain so we can give the workers at BIFAB long-term livelihoods rather than just short-term salvation? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank uh, Mark Ruskell for his remarks and also agree with his remarks about the workforce. Uh, I've mentioned some of the specific funds which we have available to assist the industry. Um, in addition to that, the support that we will provide through Scottish Enterprise, and that will include looking at issues uh, like uh, cost reduction and also, I think, other ways in which we can help the company bid for and win uh, future contracts. There is the Officer Wind Group, which is uh, currently um, established, which has the different players in the industry looking at that to see how best we can do this. He will be aware, of course, of the reducing cost of providing renewable energy, which has reached, I think, a, an all-time uh, all uh, low uh, of late. Um, so the cost of producing has been reduced, but of course we want to see the company being competitive, and that's what the aim of the different levels of assistance that I've mentioned uh, is seeking to achieve. Willie Rennie to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his efforts and those of others to save the jobs at BIFAB? The, the workers I speak to are relieved but frustrated that it came so close. They reminded me that Alex Salmond, when he was First Minister, promised a new industrial revolution based on renewable energy. I'm sure this is not what he had in mind. So what are the Minister's plans to grow the activities such as design, research, marketing and development to anchor those renewable jobs in Scotland in the future. Cabinet Secretary. I think Willie Rennie must be absolutely obsessed by Alex Salmon, to be honest. I noticed that was his question at 
First Minister's questions last week. Uh, I've mentioned already some of the assistance we can provide, but Willie Rennie will also know in the programme for government we've announced a substantial increase in R&D available as well, and of course that's available to uh, the renewable sector. I've mentioned also some of the other funds which we're seeking to make available to the company. Uh, I also have spoken, spoken to large, uh, members of, uh, large numbers of the workforce and have had extremely positive um, feedback on the basis of the government's uh, intervention along with uh, many others. Uh, and I think it is important to recognise this is a private company involved in a private contract. When the Scottish Government became aware of issues in relation to that, we have acted as quickly as we could in order to ensure that contract can be fulfilled. More importantly, that many of the employees, some of whom will be in my constituency, some of whom will be in Willie Rennie's constituency, stayed employed. They were looking at a Christmas without wages and without employment last week, and we have acted very quickly to make sure that's done. And also, I would say, in relation to the Scottish Government's approach to it, if he was to go and ask the different parties, the companies, the trade unions and others involved about the activities of the Scottish Government on Thursday and Friday. I received nothing but positive uh, commendation from them for the commitment that we showed, the time that we gave to it, the number of people involved with it, and that includes officials as well as ministers. So having put that much effort into doing that, of course we want to see if we can maximise the benefits for the industry. I've mentioned the different things that we intend to do, but it's also worth bearing in mind this is not an industry on its knees. 14% in terms of the turnover I've mentioned already and in terms of the uh, workforce. So we are doing a good job just now, but I do accept there is more that we have to do and many of the measures which I've announced today are trying to make sure that we have that brighter future in terms of renewables. Murdo Fraser to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. G given the importance of uh, offshore renewables to the future of BIFAB, is the Cabinet Secretary in a position to give us any update on when the uh, offshore wind projects in the Firths of Forth and Tay which were held up by the recent legal challenge by RSPB, thrown out by the Supreme Court, are now likely to proceed. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, some of those have been quite protracted, especially the one in the fourth, which uh, Murdo Fraser mentions. Uh, they are going through different processes in each of those cases, and in some cases we are not able to foreshorten that process. So I would expect around 2019 before those projects come forward. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I echo the words of my colleague David Torrance, MSP, and put on record my sincere thanks to all those involved in reaching a resolution. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary outline what support is being provided to BIFAB to ensure that a similar situation does not arise in the future? Cabinet Secretary. In addition to what I've said already, I would say to Jenny Gilruth, I think it's fair to say that the company themselves are much more aware of the assistance that the Scottish Government is able to provide, but we don't want to do it in that kind of crisis environment in which we uh, had to operate last week. There was, I think, on three occasions the company was about to go into administration, and twice I phoned them to postpone that so that we could get the time and space to work. Now, that's not ideal, so I think the underlying point behind Jenny Gilruth's question is what can we do to make sure that doesn't happen is very important. I have mentioned the different measures that we've Taken, and I would, in addition to uh, mention the Scottish Enterprise support, uh, seeking further capital investment and also looking for further contracts. In addition to those things, the other things which I've mentioned in terms of um, activities by the Scottish Government um, and the company jointly, uh, which I'm not able to go into more detail, I promise and undertake to make sure that both uh, Jenny Goldruth and other interested members are kept updated as those progress. Claire Baker to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you. Can I recognise the commitment, tenacity and determination of the workforce in recent weeks and the community in making sure that this deal could be reached? I understand this contract is due to be completed in April. How can the Scottish Government and its agencies help promote and restore confidence in BIFAB so it can exploit upcoming opportunities and secure future work for the Yards to maintain these vital jobs within Fife? Cabinet Secretary. Hey. Can I thank Claire Baker uh, for her comments about the workforce, I think, which we all agree with. Um, there are two things, really, which are central to ensuring the future success of the company. One is delivering on this contract. Uh, that's extremely important, and we're putting in the support to ensure that they're able to do that. And in addition to that, different parties to this contract are also putting in support to make sure that that happens. Because by seeing that this company can deliver contracts like that, that builds confidence for others to place contracts. And the second point is winning those contracts, uh, which is very important. So we want to provide whatever support we can within the rules in which we have to operate to help the company to win those future contracts. And it's a virtuous circle. If you win the contracts, confidence grows. If you deliver the contracts, then your reputation grows at the same time with more chance of winning further contracts. That's what we're trying to do. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Alexander Stewart. 
uh, with BIFAB uh, playing a major part in the development of the Beatrice offshore wind farm, uh, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that it is also very welcome that many companies and projects that depend on the continuing existence of BIFAB? Beatrice is something I can see at night uh, from my own garden, so I'm close to it and know how important it is. Is this a key part of ensuring that we continue to promote renewable energy and the businesses that depend on it? Cabinet Secretary. I think uh, Stuart Stevenson draws out a very important point, which is those other companies, I would in particular mention uh, NRL in that regard, who also employ people who are also dependent upon this work uh, continuing and will also benefit if we're able to grow uh, what the business uh, currently does. Uh, by winning future contracts. So I, I do acknowledge that. It is extremely, an extremely important part of the Scottish supply chain. And it was uh, interesting to hear from different aspects of the discussions last week, the extent to which, um, again, as Claire Baker mentioned, the workforce itself is seen as the most valuable asset by far that company has, and is internationally recognized for the skills that they have. They do have to have a, a tougher focus in terms of delivery. There's no question of that. But if you can do that, then having the opportunity to trade on the reputation of that workforce, I think we can uh, continue to see BIFAB as a, a, a vital part of the Scottish supply chain. Alexander Stewart, followed by Gail Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would also like to pay tribute to the workforce during this turbulent time for the company and the locations they, they work in and for. The UK Government today announced further support for the oil and gas industry through transferable tax relief. Can the Scottish Government advise what medium and long-term support they are offering BIFAP? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, I think I've mentioned uh, on a number of occasions the different uh, forms uh, and the nature of the support that we would offer BIFAB. In relation to the UK Government support, we have asked, uh, in relation to the oil and gas side of things, for a number of years now for loan guarantees, for example. We were told initially no, we were told yes, and then nothing's happened. And this is a vital part of the support for the infrastructure in the oil and gas industry and also leads on through the supply chain. So I think we're also still waiting to find out if the much trumpeted ambassador to be appointed by the UK government for oil and gas has actually been appointed or cited anywhere near uh, the oil and gas fields of the UK. So I think we have had some frustrations with the UK government. There is an opportunity, perhaps uh, as raised by um, Jackie Bailey, for us to work closely with the, Scot uh, the UK government in relation to the industrial strategy to provide further support. But again, as has been made evident by members in the uh, statement uh, or topical questions last week, trying to ensure they are best placed to uh, help that transition from oil and gas and carbon-based fuels towards renewables is also very important. And I would hope that the UK government is willing to work with us to make sure that we can further bolster the industry here in Scotland. Gail Ross to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to maintain Scotland's world-leading position as a place for low carbon and renewable energy development. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the renewables industry is not only important for our long-term environmental goals, but also has wider community benefits, particularly in my constituency of Caithness, Sutherland and Ross? And might I add, I can also see the Beatrice development from my window. Cabinet Secretary. It's good to know that so many people are keeping an eye on Beatrice, um, <laughs> presiding officer. I, I do agree with Gail Ross about the crucial nature, especially in an area that she, like the one she represents, where high-value jobs in rural areas are extremely beneficial. Uh, and the renewable sector and the supply chain is crucial to the future of the Scottish economy more generally, as well as uh, Gail Ross's own area. It, as I've said already, already punches above its weight. Uh, employs around 58,500 people. I'm not sure that's evident from some of the questions which have been asked. 58,500 people, 14% of the UK total, and a turnover of around £10.5 billion. Again, 14% of the UK total. So we here in the Scottish Government are determined to see that growth further in the future, both for the benefit of areas like Gail Ross and, of course, for the Scottish economy more generally. Claudia Beamish to be followed finally by Ivan McKee. Claudia Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary states in the statement there are some real opportunities for the Scottish supply chain to take advantage of growth in the sector. There have been some missed opportunities for renewables manufacturing in the past, not least in onshore wind manufacture. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree to commission a scoping exercise for supply chains so we can plan strategically to develop jobs here across Scotland, urban and rural, throughout all regions, <coughs> Uh, building on our own industrial strategy, which must be developed as a matter of urgency. Cabinet Secretary. 
I think I would reassure Claudia Beamish that much of that work has already been undertaken and I think there's some uh, very important work in terms of the supply chain, the collaboration which can take place in the supply chain. Um, and I, I think it's true to say that that collaboration has not been what it should be up to this point. And if the supply chain in Scotland is more able to collaborate more effectively, there are greater chances of winning more business. Uh, but in terms of scoping that out, I think much of that work has already been undertaken. I'm happy to provide that information to Claudia Beamish. If she remains dissatisfied and wants to come back, then I'm more than happy to listen, uh, listen to that in future. But much of this work uh, is uh, underway. And also, I would say that that is on top of the success that we already have. But of course, we want to do more in the future if possible. Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you. In my role as Parliamentary Liaison Officer for the Economy and from my previous career in manufacturing business turnaround, I'm well aware of the hard work and imaginative solutions that ministers will have put into the rescue of BIFAB. This is one of a long line of successful interventions by the Scottish Government to save manufacturing businesses. Can I ask how the lessons learned in these exercises can be employed to good effect to support other key businesses and key manufacturing sectors across Scotland to grow and expand? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I think it's very important uh, in response to Ivan McKee that we do learn lessons. And I think there are lessons in here, as there always must be for the government as well, in terms of how we can respond and become uh, involved in these situations uh, earlier. I have said to people, if they had seen the um, activity on the fifth floor of St Andrew's House last Saturday, and then speeded it up if it was filmed and then put a Benny Hill soundtrack to it, they would have seen a huge amount of activity with different parties talking to different people at different times. Um, so we will learn lessons from that. It was, a, it was a, a, an experience which, dealing with a number of partners involved in the consortium, dealing with the trade unions as well, making sure they were kept up to inform, uh, up, up to uh, the minutes in terms of how things were going. Uh, of course, we should learn lessons. But yes, also Scottish Enterprise, BIFAB themselves will have to learn lessons from this, and I'm sure they will. And also what we can do to help that learning uh, process through the work of the Scottish Manufacturing Advice Service uh, is also crucially important. We should all uh, learn lessons from this process. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and members for their cooperation? We now move on to the next item of business.